Hi everyone, welcome to this quick review slash overview slash look at the newly available in Australia Infrared Tube TL35. Now I say overview because I only had this one for a week or so, so I couldn't give it a full run through and take it out as much as I usually would for a proper review. But I did get a good impression of it and I did get to use it quite a lot over that week. So I can give you some impressions and ideas and thoughts. So what are the specs on it? It has a 384 by 288 sensor, 12 micron pitch, noise equivalent temperature difference of less than 40 millikelvin, 50 hertz frame rate, base magnification is 3.1 with an eye relief of 60 mil, which is a little unusual in a digital, digital scope. And I must admit the first time I looked through it, I did a double take. But for those of you who want a more of a real scope experience, this is on the right track for sure. Uh, display resolution of the internal screen is 1280 by 960 and the lens is 35mm. Now the battery pack, it has a built-in battery, does take a replaceable 18500 battery which can be inserted in through the side here. So you end up with a claimed maximum battery life of 15 hours which is pretty impressive. Now the interface is USB-C for charging and connecting to a computer for file transfer. Operation of the scope is very similar to Pulsar. You have four buttons at the back and the main button is the top one here, which you can spin around. Obviously tap for a short, short press and hold for a long press. The menu system is actually quite easy to navigate. I can't actually show you the menu because the scope itself does not record the overlay and it also does not record picture in picture. Now it mounts on standard 30mm rings, which is very handy and it is actually quite a large unit. So for comparison, I'll put it here side by side with the Pulsar XM30. So as you can see, it is a fairly big unit. And also if I sit it next to the Fermion 2 XP50, you can see the difference in size. So just be aware of that when choosing which gun you're thinking about putting it on. As for weight, it comes in just under 900 grams without the external battery. Zeroing the scope is pretty simple. First shot on target followed by holding the rifle steady whilst you move the adjusted cross to the point of impact. It does not have a freeze frame function, but it's still very usable, basically the same as most thermal scopes. Now I went out with this scope on quite a few occasions and I must admit it is a very capable scope. Now this is good news for those of us who prefer the style of thermal scope. Here in Australia, we were limited to one brand. So now we have two to choose from, different models, different resolutions and different prices. So. The only winner here is us, really, we'll be sport for choice. Now, as you can see by the footage I've been putting up in the background, this scope is very capable. Animal detection is never a problem. Identification is actually quite good. I was identifying foxes out past 200 metres in some pretty ordinary conditions. And I'm pleased to say the scope actually performed very, very well. The app was very easy to use, transferred the photos and videos without issue, and was very stable, which is actually very nice to see as well. Now, as usual, I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy it, but I'm going to tell you to have a look for sure. I am very glad there is now more choice in this area, as previously people who preferred this scope style thermal were limited to one option. And depending on your budget, it may not have worked, but now we have choice. So this is all good for the consumer. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.